Good morning, Father Jeff Henry with St. Michael Catholic Community on Monday, 21 September, uh, with 240 seconds with you. And thank you for this time today. And I wanted to share with you just a couple thoughts for today's day in the church. It's the feast day of St. Matthew. Tradition teaches that his gospel was the first written. Modern scholarship suggests rather that Mark was the first gospel. And the reason they say that is because Mark comes across as more primitive. The stories are not as well expressed and fleshed out as if somebody had gone through and taken some more time and, and put everything in there that belonged. Uh, maybe uh, it's being suggested that Matthew might have taken from selections from Mark and put them into the gospel. And in fact, Mark and Luke and Matthew are so similar and Mark seems to be the, the earliest of those, but it's like what Luke and Matthew might have done was copy ideas out of Mark, put them in their Gospels, and perhaps elaborated on, on them a little bit. That's called the synoptics, uh, the, which means they look alike, they're similar. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they, had, they, they arrived from the same source because of the way that they're ex explained. It doesn't mean that Matthew wasn't, wasn't an apostle or anything else. It just means that there was some some healthy sharing going on in that day. Luke is interesting because Luke was written by, he, he explains in chapter one that he went through a number of sources of people who were eyewitnesses in compiling his. So maybe one of those sources was Mark. Interesting stuff, isn't it? Well, but St. Matthew, what's interesting about him is that he sort of, his experience flies in the face of a, of a lot of times what you and I would normally feel comfortable with. And that is the fact that Matthew was not looked upon as a very nice person before he came to Jesus Christ. Yes, he had friends and everything, but he was a tax collector. And a tax collector in Jesus' day is not like the IRS of today. They worked for the enemy, the Roman government, and what they would do is that Rome said, well, this is the amount that you're supposed to tax the people in order to help Rome out is take this from the people which was was enough of a, an insult to the Jewish people but the other thing that the tax collectors did which really annoyed people is that they lined their pockets when they gave people their tax how much taxes they owed they would say well this is the amount that Rome requires but to themselves they'd say well I'm going to raise I'm going to require them to pay this much so that I can live off this amount of money. I can profit. And so they were looked upon by the Jews as, as bad as in their, in their eyes as maybe a prostitute or a sinner, quote unquote, just a general sinner, a bad person. And that's what the Texas collectors were looked at. They weren't associated closely with the church or anything. So what we have at the beginning of this gospel is Jesus comes by, says he passed by, I'll read it to you. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post for taxes. He said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. And then what happens is that he's at table in, in Matthew's house, and it says many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples, and the disciples we're probably a little uncomfortable too, if I would I would imagine. But the Pharisees saw this and they asked them, well, why is your master doing this? Why is he eating with these horrible people, these outcasts? And then Jesus says, because he heard it, heard of it, and he said, those who are well do not need a physician but the sick. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And this is an interesting comment on Jesus. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. The true worship of God is not just doing religious things, like offering a sacrifice, or praying, or reading God's word. All these things are good, of course, but if they don't change us, toward becoming a merciful person, to be merciful as our Heavenly Father is merciful to us, to forgive as we are forgiven, to show love and compassion on a person who's struggling or who is caught in the traps of sin, but rather just dismiss them and not want anything to do with them. 
because they're not of our sort of standards of how they, a person should be, what happens is we miss Jesus Christ, who is eating lunch with the same self, same person. Interesting thought, isn't it? So the next time you're on, you're in a place, maybe you're you're downtown, you're in the city, or or wherever you are, and you run across somebody who immediately, for whatever reason, just makes you want to stand back, stand off. Ask yourself, well, where would Jesus be right now? And take a step. Take a step of love. Take a step of mercy, and you'll find Jesus Christ next to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray that you'd send people our way. Maybe people that we're not as comfortable with, but people you want us to speak to nonetheless, because there we will find you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. I hope that you have a great week. And uh, may, uh, may all your days this week be like Friday. Talk to you soon.